man, the thief on the cross didn't have to be born again either. My phone just flashed a, a freaking thing and turned the, the, the video off. That's okay, I'll just do a part two. So the thief didn't have to be born again because he died under the Old Testament because the New Testament wasn't put in force until the testator died, which is Jesus, which is stated in Hebrews. That's another Bible study. But being born again biblically, you have to be born again. And like I said, Jesus did not tell Nicodemus in John 3 how to be born again. He just told him, this is what you have to do. Okay? And the reason was it wasn't time yet. It was not time for the new birth process until Jesus was dead. Okay? And then when he rose again, he came and preached, uh, taught 50 days to all his disciples and hundreds more. You know, and when he commanded them to go to Pentecost, to the upper room, they stayed 10 days. That's when they were baptized with the Spirit of Fire, which John Baptist prophesied in Luke 3.16, if you look at it. But back to being born again. They, Pentecost was time when Jesus, when God decided to pour out His Spirit the first time. I heard T.D. Jake say that was the inauguration of the Holy Ghost, and I agree with him. Now, so if Nicodemus was at Pentecost, which most devout Jews were, I'm sure he was, and it was noised abroad, 3,000 got the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with other tongues and magnify God. Acts 2, four. they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began speaking other tongues. That's just a sign that you have been baptized or born again of the Spirit. Okay? Like I said, a lot of preachers don't understand this stuff. And I feel for their souls. And in part, this is why I'm making these, um, I'm going to be making a lot of videos about being born again. But, uh, so, we're at Acts 2 now. They got filled with the Spirit. All the people was asking Peter. And he went down into Acts 2, 36, 37, and 38. And the main thing is, see, I'm not doing an in-depth Bible study. I'm just talking what I know. Um, later on I'm going to make some in-depth ones. But Acts 2.38 is what you got to do, folks. If you want to fulfill what Jesus said in John 3, of being born again of the water and the Spirit, you have to obey Acts 2.38. It's the first biblical pattern available for the first time of John 3, of what Jesus said in John 3, of the water and Spirit. Okay? So, like I said, there's many interpretations about this stuff. I mean, it goes from the, the crazy, whacked out stuff to, to stuff that's really close. But you really, you really have to go to the Bible to get your answers. Everything that the, the church is supposed to do is in the Bible. The church I go to, they don't have prayer meetings. Well, the early church prayed every day. There's no miracles in my church. I've been there 23 years. There used to be when we had lots of prayer, but now that nobody wants to pray, there's nothing going. You can't get healed at my church. Go to somewhere else. Unless they start pray, having prayer meetings. But anyway, um, you can get born again. There's nobody. There's almost, I haven't seen almost no, nobody for years coming in and getting baptized in Jesus' name. You have to get baptized in Jesus' name. Okay? You have to repent of your sins. That's what Peter laid out in Acts 2. John 3 is Acts 2. Um, but it's more specifically Acts 2.38. You have to be baptized in Jesus' name. It washes your sins away. You can't go through the other baptisms. There's no baptism. There's only one. Ephesians 4. One baptism. You have to figure this out, preachers. Hell's going to be full of you. If you you guys, this is the basic, basic, basics. You have to be born again of water and spirit. Jesus said you will not see or enter the kingdom. So, I'm, I'm, in a loving way, I'm trying to explain things. Um, it's Acts 2, 38. the first biblical pattern. There's other biblical patterns. You can find it in Acts 8. 
You're finding an X10, X19. It's all over the place if you're looking. Paul refers back to it in uh, Romans. You know, I think it's, I could find it just about everywhere. I think I found it in Romans 3, Romans 6, Romans 10. He, he did it in X19. He baptized 12 guys, laid his hands on them. They got filled with the Holy Ghost, like at Pentecost. And of course, everybody most know Paul was not up at Pentecost. He was not part of the original fill, infilling. So he got a lot of his stuff through Revelation. And Onias, I think it's, uh, might be X-22, I have to look. But uh, laid his hands on him. And uh, Brother Saul received thy sight. And, uh, you know, later on, they're baptizing him. Calling on the name of the Lord. You know. So there's only one baptism. So I don't know if I'm clear in this. Again, I'm going to be making more videos, but this is just an impromptu. I've been really feeling to make videos for weeks, if not months. And uh, I've made some prophetic stuff on things that God told me. I'm not I'm not considering myself prophetic at all because that's uh, I'm not going there. I'm just, I share videos with things God's talked to me or showed me or told me. And... Uh, but this is about being born again. This is more important than that stuff. Um, because without this stuff, you're probably not going to make heaven. I don't care if you're the Pope. I don't care if you're Billy Graham Jr. I don't care. I, you know, it doesn't matter. There, there's no rank. Everybody's on the same playing field. It doesn't matter if you're a Protestant, uh, you know, if you're a Presbyterian, if you're whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. You have to be born again. That is the message. That's why Peter, first time up in front of public, Acts 2, that's why he spoke the pattern, which is happens to be Acts 2.38. Again, this is not a Pentecostal thing. It is a Bible mandate from God Almighty. And so that's why uh, I feel need, a need to share what I know. So that's all for now. God bless you. I'm going to try to get these videos uh, uploaded right now. God bless you.